All right, strap yourselves in, folks, because today we are diving deep into the world of SpaceX and their Starship program. Specifically, we're going to be talking about the recent Flight Test 7, a test that well, it was supposed to be a big step forward, but maybe didn't quite stick the landing. Yeah, this test was definitely one for the history books. Um, as you know, SpaceX has this kind of crazy goal of making a fully reusable spacecraft. I mean, just think about it. A spacecraft that can go to Mars and back. And not just once, multiple times. That is like the ultimate goal of space travel. And Starship is what they're hoping will get them there. Okay, so mm -hmm. for the listeners out there who aren't rocket scientists, paint us a picture. What exactly is Starship and why is everyone making such a fuss about it? Well, imagine like the biggest, heaviest rocket ever built, taller than anything we've seen before. And that's Starship. This particular test flight used Ship 33, which has the newest Block 2 technology. So a bunch of upgrades. We're talking about a monster that can lift 5 million kilograms off the ground. 5 million kilograms. That's going to be, what? <laughs> 100 <laughs> elephants near the rocket. But why reusable? What makes that so special? Well, that's the key to making space travel affordable, you know? Right now, launching anything into space is super expensive. Mm. Because most rockets are only used once. It's like buying a brand new car to just drive to the store and then throwing it away. Mm. Starship, though, it's meant to be like a workhorse. It can make multiple trips, which cuts the cost way down. Some people think reusability could make getting to orbit 10 times cheaper. 10 times. Now that's something I can get behind. But this test flight, it didn't really work out, did it? No, not completely. But even with rocket science, sometimes you learn more from the things that go wrong than the things that go right. And this test, it had a lot of complicated steps, even before the launch. Like what? I've heard people talking about cryogenic testing and wet dress rehearsals. Can you explain what those are for people who don't know a lot about rockets? Sure. Think of it like a super detailed checklist. Cryogenic testing is when they basically freeze the rocket to see how it handles the cold temperatures of space. They use liquid nitrogen, which is super cold, to make sure everything can survive in those temperatures. Okay, that makes sense. What about the wet dress rehearsal? What's that all about? It's like a full simulation of the countdown and the fueling process, but they don't actually launch the rocket. They load it up with propellant, do all the checks, make sure everything is ready to go, and then they drain the fuel out. It's like a final exam before the real launch. So they did all that? Yeah. Checked everything twice, and then boom. Well, not quite boom yet. Booster 14, which is the first stage of the rocket, it worked perfectly. It even landed back on Earth safely for a second time. That's only happened one other time, so it's a pretty big deal. It was Ship 33, the upper stage, that had problems. Right, the, the part that was supposed to go into orbit. What was it supposed to do and what actually happened? Well, the plan for Ship 33 was pretty ambitious. It was supposed to reach orbit, deploy some Starlink simulators, which are basically fake payloads to practice with, and then try to re-enter Earth's atmosphere in a controlled way. They wanted to test everything it could do. So a full test run before a real mission. But then things got a little dramatic, right? Yeah. While Ship 33 was going up, a bunch of its engines failed, one after the other, and it ended up exploding over the Turks and Caicos Islands. Whoa. That must have been something to see. Airspace closures, debris falling down. It sounds like a movie. It was definitely dramatic. But even though it failed, SpaceX got a lot of valuable data from it. They're going to analyze every engine shutdown, every little thing that went wrong. It's like a puzzle they need to solve to figure out what happened and how to stop it from happening again. Speaking of analyzing data, I heard NASA was involved in this test too, right? Yeah, yeah. They had a special plane ready to record data about Ship 33's re-entry and how hot it would get coming back into the atmosphere. They even did practice runs over the Gulf of Mexico and Australia to get ready. Wow, that's dedication. Why was NASA so interested in all this? What's so important about that re-entry data? Well, getting a spacecraft back to Earth is one of the hardest parts of spaceflight. They need to understand how a spacecraft handles the atmosphere at those speeds and temperatures. And the data NASA was trying to collect is really important, not just for Starship, but for all future space flights. It helps us learn about how things re-enter the atmosphere, which is important for making safer and more efficient spacecraft. So even though the flight didn't go as planned, it still helped us learn more about space exploration in general. Exactly. And that brings us to the big question. What caused that explosion? Yeah. What went wrong? Well, SpaceX thinks it might have been a propellant leak, but they're still investigating. Rocket science is complicated, and even tiny problems can cause huge disasters. It's like a chain reaction. A small leak can make the pressure drop, which can mess up the engine, and that can lead to a huge explosion. So they have to be really careful. Like, detectives trying to solve a mystery. 
Exactly. And SpaceX is super thorough when they investigate these things. They'll look everywhere to find out what happened and how to stop it from happening again. This is where the real learning starts. So even though this launch wasn't perfect, it still gave us a lot of information to work with for future missions. Exactly. And that's what's so interesting about SpaceX. They learn, they adapt, they try again. Every test flight, whether it works or not, gets them closer to their goal of getting to other planets. They're always pushing the limits, even if it means making mistakes along the way. That's what exploration is all about. You learn from your mistakes and keep going. Well, on that note, I think it's time to take a break and think about what we've learned so far. When we come back, we'll talk more about what this test flight means for the future of space exploration. It's really amazing how just one test flight can make so many people talk about the future of space travel. You know, this wasn't just about launching a rocket. It was about trying to do things that have never been done before. It really shows how bold SpaceX's vision is. They're not just trying to make small improvements. They're trying to completely change how we get to space. Exactly. And that's what makes them so interesting to watch. They're not afraid to take risks, to really push the limits, even if it means failing sometimes. This test flight might not have been a complete success, but it gave them a lot of valuable data that they can use to make things better next time. You were saying before that getting a spacecraft back to Earth is one of the hardest parts of spaceflight. Can you talk more about that? What makes it so tough and why is that data so important? Okay, so imagine a spacecraft coming back to Earth at thousands of kilometers per hour. The friction from the atmosphere makes it super hot, hot enough to melt most things. That's why they need those special heat shields to protect the spacecraft. It's like a trial by fire, literally. Uh, it really is. And it's not just about not burning up. The spacecraft has to stay stable and in control while it's coming down, and it has to slow down enough to land safely. That data NASA was collecting on Ship 33's reentry. It's super important for understanding how different materials and designs work under those extreme conditions. So it's not just about getting to space, it's about being able to come back to. Exactly. And that's why being able to reuse a spacecraft is so important. If you want to be able to use it for multiple missions, it has to survive coming back to Earth and be ready to fly again. It's incredible to think about all the things they have to take into account. It really is. And even though it exploded, this test flight still helped us get closer to having a reusable spacecraft. All that data they got and all the lessons they learned, it will all help make future Starship flights safer and more reliable. So even though it didn't achieve all its goals, yeah. it was still a step in the right direction. Absolutely. And it just shows how space exploration is all about trying things out, learning from what happens, and then making things better. And that brings us back to SpaceX's big dream, interplanetary travel. It seems like their main goal is Mars. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's definitely a big focus for them. Imagine a future where humans aren't just visiting Mars, but actually living there permanently. That's the kind of future SpaceX wants to create. A human colony on Mars. That sounds like science fiction. I know, right? But it's starting to feel more and more possible, and Starship is a big part of that. So even though this test flight was a setback in some ways, it also reminds us that we're living in a time of amazing progress in space exploration. Yeah, definitely. And that progress is happening because of companies like SpaceX. They're not afraid to dream big and take risks, and they learn from their mistakes. They're pushing the limits of what we can do in space and inspiring a whole new generation of scientists, engineers, and people who dream of going to the stars. It's like they're writing a new chapter in the story of human exploration. They really are. And this test flight, with all its drama and challenges, is just one small part of that story. It reminds us that the journey to the stars isn't always easy. There are gonna be setbacks and challenges, but if we keep pushing forward and keep exploring, we'll get there. It's a journey with both good and bad moments, but in the end, it shows how strong the human spirit of curiosity is. Well said. As we keep talking about SpaceX and Starship, I think it's important to remember the bigger picture, the larger meaning of this whole project. Because exploring space isn't just about technology, it's about pushing the limits of what humans can do, understanding more about the universe, and figuring out our place in it all. It makes you think about some really big questions, doesn't it? Questions about where we belong in the universe, the risks we're willing to take to explore the unknown, and what we might find out there. It does, and those are questions we should really think about as we keep exploring space. Well, on that note, let's take some time to think about those questions. When we come back, we'll wrap up our deep dive into SpaceX and Starship and talk about what this test flight means for the future of space exploration. 
Okay, so we've talked about how amazing Starship is, the problems with getting a spacecraft back to Earth, and that big goal of getting to Mars. But this test flight with that big explosion makes you think about some other stuff too, right? Yeah, for sure. Exploring space has always been about trying new things. But as we go farther away from Earth, things get riskier, but there's also more to gain. You said earlier that reusable spacecraft are important for making space travel cheaper. But this test showed that it's not easy to decay. Do you think it's worth the risk to keep trying to make them reusable? That's a tough question. It's hard to say for sure. On the one hand, the benefits are huge. Imagine being able to go back and forth to space whenever we want for way less money. It would open up so many possibilities for exploring and discovering new things. Yeah, it would totally change the game. Mm -hmm. But we're also talking about these crazy, complicated machines that have to work in really harsh environments. Things can go wrong, and they did in this case. Exactly. And as we keep pushing the limits of technology, we're going to run into new problems that we didn't expect. The important thing is to learn from those problems and make our designs better so that space travel is as safe as possible. Like a constant back and forth, right? Trying to balance the potential benefits with the risks. Right. And in the end, it's a decision that we all have to make together as a society. I agree. Exploring space isn't just about science. It's a human thing. It's about wanting to know more about the universe and where we fit in and being willing to face challenges that push us to our limits. It reminds us that exploration means going into the unknown. There will be setbacks and times when we're not sure what to do. But our desire to learn and discover new things will keep us going. Well put. So as we wrap up our look at SpaceX and Starship, remember that even though this test flight ended dramatically, it's just one small step on a much bigger journey. A journey that will challenge us and inspire us and hopefully help us understand more about our place in the universe. Exactly. And we want you to join us on this journey. Keep looking up at the stars, keep asking questions, and keep exploring. The universe is huge, and there's so much out there waiting to be discovered.